Dwell within us, Lord. Dwell within our midst this morning, Jesus. We call you a maker, Lord. We call you a maker. We call you promise keeper. We call you promise keeper. We call you light in the darkness. And we worship you this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. You are here. Moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You worship.
call upon the one whose name changed things. When we call the name of Jesus, the things that we are faced with in our lives, situations turn around because of our way maker, because of the one who we call upon that promises good things. We worship the Lord.
because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and sing, Lord, I worship you because of who you are.
Jehovah is his name. Hallelujah. This is our time of prayer. But when we pray, we need to know to whom we pray. Who are you praying to this morning? Praying to the way maker. We're praying to the miracle worker. We're praying to the promise keeper. Hallelujah. We're praying to the light when you look around and you see darkness we're praying to the light in the darkness we're praying to Jehovah Shalom Jehovah Nissi Hallelujah Jehovah Jireh to whom are you praying this morning somebody get a vision Hallelujah somebody if you have a need this morning, apply, cry out to Jehovah Jireh. If you need peace, cry out to Jehovah Shalom. Cry out to the healer. If you need healing in your body, cry out. Hallelujah. 
Come on church, arise. Wake up. And cry out to the only one that can help us this morning. As a body, we cry out to God. Would you lift up a prayer this morning, right where you are? You're wearing a mask. But you can lift up a cry out. Cry out for your wife. Cry out for your husband. Cry out for your children. Cry out for your family. Oh God, I need you. You're my help when I feel helpless. You are my strength when I feel weak. Lord, when I'm, I'm sick in my body, you are my healer, God. I thank you. I thank you that you are a way maker. One day you made a way for me. Lord, I thank you that you're always opening doors. Somebody for yourself this morning. Sometimes nobody can help you in your situation. You have to get a vision and cry out, God, I need your help. Help me, God. Help me, Lord. Somebody pray this morning. That's why we're here. Jesus, we need you. We acknowledge this morning that we cannot help you, God. You cannot help us until we get a revelation of who you are. You cannot help us until we learn to cry out, Lord God Almighty, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. What is it that you want the Lord to do for you? Lord, if you are willing, can you help me, please? God is telling you this morning, he's more than willing and definitely is more than able. Hallelujah. Somebody learn this morning. Just cry out so that when you leave this place, you can say, like David, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me. You see, before the deliverance came, David said, I cried unto the Lord. How can he hear us if we don't cry out to him? I cried to the Lord and he heard me and then he delivered me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, the son of David. Thou son of David, have mercy. Somebody cry out for mercy. Mercy for your children. Some of you are tired, exhausted. Say, Jesus, have mercy this morning. I need your mercy. Have mercy on me, God. I have mercy. So we cry out to you, God. For the needs in this place are many. Hallelujah. But our help comes from you. Our help comes from you. The maker of heaven and earth. The ruler, the king, the sovereign lord. He's here. Whatever your petition is this morning. The lord hears you. So God. Reach that one crying out for pain this morning. Crying out for healing in our midst, oh God. And those online, God, crying out for healing and deliverance. We take you at your word. We believe you. We trust you. You can make a way where there's no way. We trust your word. Lord, we may not be able to see with our eyes. But through the eyes of faith, we see delivered people. Your people delivered. Your people set free. Your people whole and healed. And we give you praise that you're moving in our midst. You are here turning lives around. We worship you. We worship you. You are here moving in our midst. You are here turning lives around and I worship you God I worship you way maker hallelujah somebody give him thanks this morning somebody give him thanks for making a way thank you Lord you delivered me thank you Lord I have peace now in my mind thank you Lord 
I feel healing in my body. Thank you. Somebody just give God thanks. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I can see clearly now. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. Thank you for what you've done and what you continue to do in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You've turned it around. You've turned it around. Hallelujah. Pastor's going to be coming with a special prayer now or later. Hallelujah. But God is more than able and he's more than willing. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands on you. Perhaps most of you may have heard that the passing of Tumi's mother uh, yesterday in Houston. And um, I've been in touch with the parents. So I mean the father and the Tumi and Albert. And um, we just like to pray for that family. Uh, Mrs. Kemi, um, she was not a physical member of our church, but always there in the background in our Bible studies, listening to the church services every Sunday. And indeed, uh, a great supporter of, of hope in so many ways. That family has been just a gift from God to us. And um, she's gone home to be with the Lord. We were very much in prayer for her. God chose otherwise than heal her physically, but she's now healed eternally. We're gonna pray for the family. They leave uh, Houston today. They may have left already for, for Louisiana. And we're going to pray that God's favor would rest, rest upon them. And Father, at this time of celebration of Christmas, we hear the bells, we see the lights, we see the wonderful um, things that remind us of Christmas. And yet, Lord, right now we know there's grief in the home of the uh, Kemi, uh, Mrs. Kemi, the cuckoos, oh God. We're praying in Jesus' name today that, yes, your light the light of hope, the light that shines in darkness and dispels it. That, oh God, right now you'd shine in that home, in that family, in Jesus' name. God, we pray where only you can to give comfort and give grace and give strength. Lord, we know sometimes human words can do little in situations like this. But God, we pray you take this family in your arms this morning and embrace them close to you, O oh God. May they feel the strength of your arms around them, your love for them, O oh God. Thank you that Mrs. Kumi, Mrs. Mrs. Kemi is home with you, Lord God. She is in the arms of Jesus, safe and secure. Her life was a testament, a great testament to her faith in God, a living witness to the God she served in so many ways physically, she demonstrated before her eyes the God whom she served. And thank you, Father, for that life that leaves a, a wonderful legacy. And the afterglow will be with us for a long time, Father. We pray your blessing upon this home. Your pro provision, O oh God, for this home, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome to Hope International Ministries. I hope everyone is doing well. I would like to take a moment to welcome everyone who is watching online. Thanks for tuning in. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge our pastors. Our head pastor is Reverend Dr. Trevor Grizzle and his wife, Dr. Maureen Grizzle, and our assistant pastor, Pastor Wonder Abodapi, and his wife, Patience Abodapi. We welcome any special guests worshiping with us today. If today's your first time worshiping with us, please raise your hand. It looks like we're all family today. The burden of the leadership of him is that all peoples, irrespective of their racial, cultural, or ethnic background, will find a place where they truly belong as children of God. 
Hope is also creating a home away from home for people of different nations resident in the U.S. who need a place to fellowship and serve the Lord. Our vision is serving locally and reaching globally, and our 2021 theme is living in faith that conquers. Here are this week's announcements. Morning prayers continue this week from Monday to Friday at 6 a.m. There will be a women's ministry prayer and Bible studies Monday at 8 p.m. Bible studies are on Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom and prayer sessions on Thursday at 8 p.m. There is also Sunday school at 10.30 before main service begins. Christmas service this year will be on Sunday the 19th of December and our end of the, end of the year crossover service will be on Friday the 31st of December. Please mark your calendars. There is also a men's meeting today on Zoom at 6 p.m. The Zoom link has already been sent out. At this time, I'd like to call on Joe Bideau for Mission Minute. sanitize everything. Yes, Pastor, I have a short testimony for uh, Madam Cuckoo. Uh, maybe you didn't know this, but we had a lot of books in our house that we we're going to ship for missions. She came by, she worked, we packed all the books. She worked, I was feeling kind of, uh, but she worked with Tumi. And then we took the uh, books to the shipping area there. And then she drove up with Kumi and she helped to ship the books to Nyami Betre. The books that the Nyami Betre kids are having right now, some of it was packed by Madame Kuku. She has left her legacy at Nyami Betre. I am telling you this for you to know that you too can leave your legacy at Nyami Betre or on Mission Field or something. Here's another short testimony. I learned the books of the Bible the Old Testament, from somebody who came from Canada who taught us the song. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel. That's how I learned it years ago. Whatever you do for missions, you think it's just one day, but it lasts a lifetime. I learned that years ago, and today when they say, oh, go to Malachi something, I know where to find it. I sing the song fast. Yes, I didn't go to ORU, but a missionary told me, and look at where we are. Jehovah Jireh. It means he makes, he prepares for you before you get there. It's unbelievable. The last thing, first picture. 2020, this is Nyami Betre Library Building. Number two, this is Nyami Betre School Building, the contractor and the headmistress. Next one. And the headmistress. Next one. Nyami Betre Building, the outside of it today. If you had asked me uh, 2020 that this is possible, I would say, no way. I can't. I don't have the money. But Jehovah Jireh. Let Jehovah be your gyra. Whatever it is that you've asked of him, he's going to do it for you. Hey, the last, next, next picture. This is the inside of the library at Nyami Betre. Next one. Remember, this past September, our pastors went, had a grand opening, the ribbon cutting. Next one. This is inside the Nyami Betre Children's Library. Look at the children studying. You see those chairs that we used to have at the old place, remember children studying. You see those chairs that we used to have at the old place, remember blue chairs that we had at the youth center? Yes, it was donated, we were able to ship it, and that's what the kids are sitting on at Nyami Betre today as we speak. Next one. These are puzzles that the kids at Nyami Betre are playing with in the library. Uh, if we have time, I'll show you some. They are being creative. Building an aeroplane on top of a house. It's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Next one. 
We gave Nyami Bachira children school uniforms. They are showing it off. It's because you gave. And we were able to do that. Next one. Next picture. Look at those girls. Look at that. The things that you are doing for somebody, God is going to do the same for you. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's no respecter of persons. Next one. Those kids need to go to the bathroom or the restroom somewhere. Right now, they do it in the bushes. This is a library building that Delphine designed for us. Next one. It's a latrine restroom. Uh, this is what, if you take the roof off, this is what it will look like. They don't have anything right now, but we intend to build this for them. Joe, how are you going to do that? Me, you, and anybody who believes that uh, the God we serve is Jehovah Jireh, he's able to do because he has already prepared somewhere for us to do this. He has already prepared you and those who want to give towards this to give towards this. Next one. This is where the boys and the girls go and pee. It's, this is what we can do. We are able to do. Hope International Ministries is able to do this. The good Lord has already provided for us. The Hover Jaira. You know, when you go to Malachi 3.10, they say, we'll oh, bring all the tithes to the storehouse. When you go down a little bit, the good Lord says, prove me now. Said the Lord of hosts. And see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing. God said, don't prove him tomorrow. Prove me is test me. Don't prove him tomorrow, next week, next year, next month. He said, now, and see, and let God see, let God show you that he's able, that God we serve is able. He loves you. He cares for you. He, whatever you have put before him, Jehovah Jireh will do it for you. We have to raise funds to meet the needs of this church. We have to uh, get extra money for missions. Every time that you come to church, and you give $10 for missions. You know, if you come to church regularly, at the end of the year, you would have given $520 for missions. If 10 of us are committed to do that, we can build this thing twice over. I'm encouraging you. I'm telling you. God said, test him and see that he will not open the windows of heaven for you. It's not for me. It's for you. And the you is me. And so I believe that he will open the windows of heaven for me. And he's a gyra. So he, the gyra that I've asked him, he will do it for me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, right now, let me call the praise team to come up. Oh, pastor, you have some. Oh. Thank you, Brother Joe. Now, he does it the only, the only way he can. I mean, that's Joe, right? Thank God for him. He's our missions director, and he's doing a great job. Now, I want to say that, um, you know, it's going to cost us just about $10,000 for the latrines to dig it deep. To, uh, we have seven teachers, and we have over 100 odd students. It is for the school, not for this, the village. But you know um, how God begins with you, a seed, a seed thought. And when I saw the lack of a bathroom in, when I went there last time to Ghana, I said, we've got to do something. We've got to do something. And there's a, there's a, there's a man with us who went to the, on, the, on the missions team. And he said, I, I, I want to see what we can do as well. And already, he has raised for us, and we have in hand, $2,500 toward the school. I mean, the bathroom, that is. Now, I'm raising funds on my own also. What I'm saying to you is that the weight, the full weight, and of course, by the way, the playground, we're going to pave that, concrete, concrete that, because when it, when it rains, all the, all the dirt is washed away. That's another couple of thousand dollars. But you say, well, man, that's a lot of money. Well, first of all, 
the full weight of this project is not, uh, isn't on us alone. But if we see the need, and there's a great need, we can help. We can help. We're doing God's work. It's God's, we're investing in young people. One of these days, one of these young kids may be the president of, the, of uh, Ghana. You know that? We, we have vision to get some of these kids in university. Not me, but the, the, the founder. You know, he has these plans out there. So what I'm saying to you is that don't think, well, we've got to raise $12,000. And it's, it's all on us. No, it's not all on us. But we can do our part. And that's all we're asking you to do. Do your part. Do the best you can. Give a sacrificial gift. Make it sacrificial. That means it hurts when you give. Because you're giving out of your lack sometimes. You say, God, it's a sacrifice. And that's what God blesses. Amen. So we're going to do this. We have to do it. And we're beginning. Brother Joe's going to be in Ghana uh, in, on the 20th of January. And he's going to oversee the first stages of the, this latrine, the outhouse, outhouse, okay? To make certain all the specifications are in place, the depth, the breadth, the whole thing is just right. And before he comes back, he'll say, it looks good. So we're saying we don't have, you know, 10 months to get this done. We have to begin to say, okay, I'm going to lay aside something uh, during, the, during this holiday. We're going to lay aside something, and so we can give something substantial that he can take over to begin the project. Okay? God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Can I call the uh, praise team to come as we prepare to take our offering? Stand as we give cheerfully unto the Lord. We have numerous ways that we can give. You can text it to 84321. Or you can cash up, dollar sign, Hope International Ministries. And it's on the board. Numerous ways that we can give this morning. Or we have our baskets here. You can come up and give. Amen. Let's rise as we give cheerfully. This kind God
Father, we thank you today for your gift that your people brought back, oh God, to say thank you. Father God, we pray that you bless it. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you bless the hands that will use it, oh God. May they use it, oh God, to bring furtherance unto your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your people, oh God, today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I will praise you, my God. Amen. Anybody out there? 247, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our God remains faithful. I'm just here to give a very quick announcement for now. But um, it's an exciting one. We've just been singing our God is faithful. We praise him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But I just want to tell you the God who is faithful to see Hope International Ministries through almost 20 years. 20 years. Come on, saints of God, 20 years. God has been faithful to us. You know, like I know, that you'll see many churches start five years later, even two years later, they're no longer. But for some reason, when God gave the vision, he decided that he is going to take it to, through to completion. Amen? That's why, can you all see the, there you go, amen. Amen. We are going to be celebrating the goodness of God. I'm, I'm talking about those who know how to celebrate, that is. Celebrate, then we're going to celebrate the goodness of God who helped us through 20 years. So next year, Hope International Ministries, next year we're going to be celebrating this. It's going to be a glorious weekend, unprecedented weekend. Because our God, he does new things. Amen? I want everybody to put in your calendar. Write it down on paper. Don't make any plans to go anywhere. But for the weekend of March 4th through the 6th, 2022, it's going to be Hope's celebration of 20 years of God's goodness. Thank you. Somebody caught the vision. The whole weekend we're going to celebrate. Now, you know, we are in Oklahoma and o ORU is not very far. And you know that you will see on, um, the, they will show you pictures on Oral Roberts' desk where it said, make no small plans here. Make no little plans here. Well, guess what, Hope? We're not making little plans for this weekend. Big plans and big plans only. Amen. Because we will rejoice and celebrate. Not only will we be celebrating where we've been, but to God be the glory. By the help of God, we're going to celebrate where God is taking us to. Where we're going. Next year, we're going to be kicking off the ministry side of Hope International Ministries. Did you hear me say that? Did you notice that we are not Hope International Ministry? 
We are Hope International Ministries. By God's help, by the grace of God, we'll be kicking off some of these, these outreach programs and some of the things that have been passionate to the heart of um, the visionary. Well, God is the one who gave the vision. But there's been some things in the heart of um, God and for the visionary to bring to pass. And so we are going to be kicking off some of these great and powerful things. If you're with me, would you give God praise? And we're all part of this. So be expecting great things. I'll be giving you more information. More information. Some things are already turning that I'm excited about. But I'll tell you a little bit more. But earlier, you're going to start seeing things like flyers. You're going to see a flyer that we post on, on, on the WhatsApp page. So you can start to send it out to your friends and family members. But we're inviting the people who have been part of this ministry all these years. We're going to be celebrating you, first of all, because you're current. Amen? But we're going to give God thanks for those who helped us at the very beginning. And so we're going to be able, we're going to, you're all going to be part of this. We're going to distribute these flyers, and we're going to call the people back home to celebrate with us. Amen? Amen? So be looking out, be expecting. I'll be here telling you about it. But all I can tell you now is, as a very well-known speaker says, all I can tell you now is, as a very well-known speaker says, get ready. God bless you. You can do better than that. Come on, church. Amen. And indeed, some big plans. Uh, uh, so far, we haven't unveiled any of that, those big plans, but some big things are going to be happening. It's surprising. It's su su surprised you. So make no small plans. And of course, we're going to be inviting people who were a part of the church from the way back, from way back, you know, and uh, those who have been a part of us along the journey. We're going to be inviting. So this place, I think, will be very small. We have to find a way to punch some of those walls out. Well, not really, but um, it's going to be big, okay? And uh, it's going to be affecting the whole community because there's some community, community events that are going to be taking place as well. And this is for the community. It's not for, just for hope. It's for the whole community. And so we have the... Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Savior, I come to Thee. Everybody say, I need Thee. Oh, how I need Thee. Every together. I need thee. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Yeah. Oh, bless me now. We need him at all times. Every hour, we need him. And he's always there saying, I'm ready to meet you at the point of your need. Thank God. He's an ever-present God. You at the point of your need. Thank God. He's an ever-present God anywhere we are in the hour of our need. Yes. And this morning we are very happy to have as our preacher today the, I want to say very quickly, and very soon should I say, the Reverend Philemon Ash, because he, he, he's, uh, um, he's waiting for his first ordination certificate, you see. But already God is using him to be a powerful force in our church. If you don't hear this young man teach, you ought to come just to see how he breaks down the word, the depth, the richness. I think you need to come to Sunday school. I come to be taught. <laughs> I mean, I'm here as a professor, and I'm learning things from him. You ought to come. But also, he has the word of God, the preached word, powerful in the word. And what a gift we have. And Brother Philemon, come, sir. Let God use you to bless, bless us, his people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Indeed, it is an honor for me to stand before you people of God today to talk to you what God has placed on my heart to say to you. So if you don't mind, can you just bow with me for a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for this is the day that you have made. And you have preserved our lives and you have brought us into your house so that we can have fellowship one with another and with you. And even now, O oh God, as the utterance of your word, another and with you. And even now, O oh God, as the utterance of your word is an instrument, a vessel, a mouthpiece to proclaim your word to the hearer's study and make go forth with clarity that lives today would be edified in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I just have one portion of scripture which I would ask that we stand for the reading of. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Just one portion of scripture. One verse. I'm a bit old school, so I love the King James. So, uh, it's my preference. It says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Amen. You may be seated. We are approaching a season that many find to be one of the most cruel of all seasons. That's the winter. And according to the National Center for Health Statistics, of the 2,000 residents who die each year from weather-related causes, about 63% die due to cold-related temperatures. And 31 died due to heat-related causes. And the remaining six, they die from floods, storms, lightnings, the others. But the winter has been for many one of the most dreaded seasons. I don't like the winter. And anyone who's from the Caribbean, Brother Cliff, we don't like the cold. 
We like when it's warm. And the year passing, <laughs> we like when it's warm. And the year passed, even entering into the beginning of this year, we saw where the snow came and many were left without electricity for a number of days. And then we understand how good electricity can be because it provides us with warmth when it's cold out. And we don't understand that for many who are homeless during this period of time, it's one of the dreaded times because no matter how much you lay up, sometimes you're still cold. Still cold. Brother Philemon, where are you going with all this? <laughs> when winter is approaching, there are many indicators around us that we can look towards to know when winter is coming. If even you don't have a phone, you don't have a calendar, you don't follow the months, there are indicators around us that tells us when winter is approaching. Suddenly, sunlight seems short. It's not much. By 6, 5, sometimes it's already dark. Sudden change of temperature. It begins to feel cold. One of the indicators which I want to share with you is the falling of the leaves from the trees. One day I was traveling through the, neighbor, the neighborhood and probably the first of all times, maybe, but to me, it just seemed like there are a lot of leaves than before, to me. To me. And I began to observe it, and then I looked up at the trees, which were looking pretty bare. And I said to myself, well, certainly, you trees are losing a lot. And in that moment, the Lord spoke to me. Like Moses at the burning bush. And when I said to myself, like, surely the trees are losing a lot. The Spirit of the Lord said, but not to dare defeat. Not to the defeat of the tree. While the leaves are very important to the tree, there is coming a season that the tree understands. I must rid myself of these. Because if I hold on to them, it's going to cripple me for the season that is approaching. Because for the trees, though they use the leaves to manufacture food, when it becomes cold and the sunlight is few, to conserve the energy that is needed to make it through the cold, I need to cut off a few things that are important. And the word of God is saying he is about to take some of us through a season that needs us to just cut off some things that we held so dear that are important. But in order for us to make it through, we got to start stripping ourselves from that which is important. The winter is nothing to play with. And some of the seasons that God will take us through, it calls for preparation. You see, because before the cold temperatures reach, the trees have already prepared themselves. They are not looking at the weatherman who say by mid-December it's going to be very hot. So keep your leaves. No, they are aware. And we ought not to put our trust in, 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 in man and their philosophies. But our trust should be in God. God is calling us to prepare. The scripture declares, blessed is the man who endures. 
Another translation renders it, happy is the man. See, because when you go down to the root of it, the blessed just means happy. When we look at the beginning of James, he said, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation, count it all joy. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 12, he declares, uh, do not think it strange concerning this, this light affliction, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Don't think it strange. Why? Because we are forewarned to prepare. To prepare. Hence, when we are at the place of our trials, and in the middle of it, we can surely lift our hands up and say, Thank you, Lord, for preparing me. Thank you, Lord. You see, the word endure here, because I would not be looking to teach much. I would not be going too deep down. But the word endure here means under. Well, actually, I should tell you it's a compound word, which actually means under, and it means to abide or remain. So when you put them together like two hands that are clapping, you are abiding under. To abide under. Now, bearing that in mind, we consider here carefully, by the way, as I jump ahead of myself, there are just two things I want to leave with you here today. Just two things. I promise I'm not going to be long. Some of you say, yes, be long, but. <laughs> two things and the first one is that there is a trial there is a trial the scripture says blessed is the man who endureth temptation for when he is tried tell your neighbor when he is tried when he is tried now the word when here I don't want you to get too caught up with it that it is not indicating that or suggesting that a sudden period of trial will occur. Rather, it is being kept on the one. Uh, supposing that, uh, can I have just two persons come in? Run quickly. I want to just bring out this illustration. Two persons. I have one. Give me another. Thank you, Brother Cliff. So, I'm going to say to Brother Cliff, I'm going to flog you. As opposed to Priscilla, I'm going to dip you in a boiling water. I'm going to keep you there. You already know that I have to prepare myself when I'm dipped in that boiling water. Cliff is anticipating a period of time when he's going to be flogged. Now, the word endure here is not referring to a case of Brother Cliff. It's referring to a, clay, a case of Sister Priscilla, where I'm going to place her under a period of trial, and she's, she's supposed to remain and abide there. It's not a one-off moment where Cliff is flogged and he's gone his way. The endurance here is talking about being placed and kept under. But thank you very much. Thank you very much. You see, because I remember growing up, that when I did wrong, oftentimes I don't know because a boy is a boy, right? <laughs> a boy would always be a boy. That I would hear my mother calling me and right away my ears already registering, this is bad. I don't know what it is, but this is bad. And as I approach her, and she'll grab me by the hand and then she'll start saying, why did you do? Why did you do? Now, I have an opportunity and a chance where I might pull myself away and run from it. Or I can stay under her discipline and take the flog. I remember there was a time that I ran. 
And I ran to the beach because I did not live far from the beach. I ran from a flogging and went to the beach. And I, yeah, enjoyed myself. And when I returned home, I got twice the punishment. One from running and the other one from what she had intended to punish me for before. <laughs> so it was twice the punishment. You see, God's intent is for us when he brings the trial for us to obediently submit ourselves to God's trials and take it, the discipline. <laughs> Develop that discipline to say, yes, Lord, I understand and I will submit myself. The world tried here. Yeah. It speaks of one being found approved or found acceptable. Therefore, when I brought Priscilla up and I told her, I'm putting her in a, that pot of boiling oil, I'm keeping on there until I saw her start looking crispy and fried that I may remove her. If at any point she's not looking that way, I'm going to keep her there until she turns that way. You see the prayer that way. You see the prayer. It is to bring you to a place where that which you are is now transformed into something else. Well, I don't intend to boil you or fry you. I don't intend to. Yes, I'll take the chicken that she offers me instead. See, but this is the, the purpose of God's trials. is so that he can take us to a place where we are now being brought and presented as approved and acceptable. And we understand the whole analogy of the potter and the clay. That the potter decides to despair. Persecuted but not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. You see, the purpose of us being tried is not to destroy us. It's not to break us to a point where we become you. Instead, it's the re 